There we go. All right, well, morning. Formal welcome, everybody. It's uh, interesting to be back. I'm not sure that it's good to be back. I suppose it was always good to be back home, but uh, yeah. So, Lee, I think we're talking about vulnerability this morning. So, uh, sounds like Trevor is very vulnerable. Um, you know, he's got his wife dominating him there, you know, ordering him around. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's just a uh, nice, nice to do lists and things like that, Trevor. Yeah. But if, uh, you get locked down in Quail Maritime for a month, you won't have to do any of it. So there you go. You better head off quickly. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So Lee, yeah, vulnerability, what is it all about? Uh, well, I found it, uh, it, it was interesting because as I say, Brene Brown is really the, the vulnerability guru. Uh, and so I did go back to, um, I didn't go back to her, um, her main TED talk that made her the name that she is today. Uh, but I did listen to a snippet, uh, one of her more recent interviews on 60 Minutes. I didn't listen to the whole uh, thing, but just a, a section of it. Uh, and I found it quite interesting, her being very clear uh, uh, about vulnerability not being oversharing. And I think that was um, a link to, to what we've been uh, talking about is how much do we share about ourselves and how much don't we? And, and she feels that it's been mis, it's a misconception um, that uh, being vulnerable means that you automatically need to share uh, personally all the time. And, and she said, that's not what she's referring to. She's referring to that, that moment of your uncertainty or um, just not being clear or nervous or whatever the case may be. There's some part of you that is not, um, it, it is not absolutely confident about the way forward. And rather than bulldozing your way through, or projecting your fear uh, and concerns onto somebody else and then perpetuating a cycle of defensiveness and, and blame and guilt uh, and frustration that you own that feeling, whatever that is and in whatever way you do. And, and she talks about leaning into it. So in, in other words, you, you're basically um, not putting up a wall. She said, don't transform her up. You know, to use this, you know, putting all the walls up. Uh, and it reminded me of, um, I watch these weird and wonderful Netflix movies, uh, The Good Place. So there's a character in The Good Place who is the head of the demons. And uh, he refuses to accept emotion of any kind. So the minute he hears emotion, uh, he cocoons up. He literally has a little cocoon that just blocks him in. And, and now you can't see him and because you can't see him, he can't see you and he can't deal, doesn't have to deal with what you're dealing with. And, uh, and then it gets to the point where if, if he's upset with anybody or if he, uh, now he's feeling the emotion, he cocoons other people and then he just, so the whole room is now full of all these cocoons. And I think that's what she's referring to is that we build these walls, we hold, we, we, we hold ourselves back from actually being open to others and open to our own feelings so that we can move forward uh, in some kind of way, not uh, just because we're willing to, to step into the unknown. And she's saying that it's in that unknown place that we actually innovate because we're willing to fail. We're willing to face our fears. Uh, and therefore it's, it's only at that point of vulnerability that true creativity happens. So I've, I, I found that interesting and, I, and I've definitely seen it uh, in my own life and in other people's lives is that, that openness where I don't, I'm, I'm willing to accept feedback, for example, um, that's, that's not, that tells me I'm, I need to change or I need to do something differently and not immediately put the wall up but actually say, well, okay, I, I see that point of view. And, and I think that's an act of vulnerability. Um, 
so yeah i think and i think that's so that's really where growth happens i think it's your willingness to be vulnerable is to say i need to i need to improve i need or i need to change or i need to see somebody else's perspective um, yeah so that's my my thoughts and ramblings around vulnerability this morning but thanks lynn yeah it's, it's interesting so as you were talking about that you know, I suppose if, uh, if the caterpillar goes into the cocoon, does he come out a butterfly, you know, when you, when you break out on the other side? So uh, we better find out from Ed on that one, because I know he's into butterflies. <laughs> yeah, I struggled with this one, actually. And um, part of the reason was because last night I went to look at the, the email to see what we were talking about, and I couldn't find it. And I know it came through because I remember reading it and... and um, so I was a bit, bit of a panic and then, then the phone went and I let it go to answer phone, but it was a friend and, and it was obviously that she needed to talk. So I phoned her back and then two hours later, I closed my PC down and went to bed and just as I was falling asleep, I remembered I was supposed to find that email. So I'm totally vulnerable because I've done no preparation whatsoever. Um, but I immediately thought about the St. Piran hermit crab. Um, it's a fascinating little creature. And it, and it lives, St. Piran was the patron saint of Cornwall where I live. And, and the, the, the St. Piran hermit crab is found on the south coast of Cornwall. And it disappeared in the 1980s after a, um, an oil tanker spilt its load and, and polluted the sea there. But it's come back. Now, the interesting thing about the hermit crab is that every so often it has to change shells because it lives in someone else's shell. And when it does that, it's extremely vulnerable to predators, etc. So what you don't want is two hermit crabs squabbling over the same shell. So hermit crabs have a very um, strict protocol about which crab gets which shell if two of them go for the same shell it's sorted out without any fighting and straight away because they need to get in that shell quickly and someone i know is actually doing a study to see whether they can actually use that as a mechanism for, for um, resolving disputes and it struck me that we haven't really got a system for coping with vulnerability like the hermit crab has. Because if we open up to one person, they can use it against us. If we open up to another person, they will help us. And therefore, it's always a dodgy judgment as to whether you do show your vulnerability. And I think because so many of us have been hurt in the past, we do put that cocoon up. And I think you're quite right. It's only when you take that cocoon down that you get innovation. When I first started um, being a manager, well, being the senior manager, one of the things I did was to introduce 360 um, reviews. And that was really painful. But it actually moved the organisation on. And I really had to, yeah, I, I had to be brave about it. So I think, yeah, you know, showing your vulnerabilities will lead to innovation, lead to growth, lead to the whole chrysalis thing where you emerge a butterfly. But it also means you could be gobbled up. And I think we still, as, as human beings, haven't actually worked out what the hermit crab has worked out that you need a process to quickly um, allow vulnerability to be good rather than a bad thing. Um, so yeah, those, those are my thoughts. And um, look up the St. Piran Hermit Crab. It's a wonderful little thing. Ivan's on the phone, so Lee, you better take, take over. 
Sorry, I was typing and thinking that my uh, co-host was uh, doing the job. Um, thanks, Edward. I uh, so let me just what I, what I was typing. talking about typing. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Is is oh, it's, it's appeared now. I've just come through. I just yeah. did. Um, yeah. So I was just linking that connection between you said being brave and and how much Brene Brown talks about courage and this there's this direct link between vulnerability and courage. Um, so, uh, but as you said, it has to come with discernment uh, as to, you know, in what context and with whom uh, do, we, do we create, have that vulnerability? Um, yeah, 360 degree feedback is, is, is complete openness, isn't it? Because they, you, you're gonna get feedback from people who don't like you and who you don't trust, uh, and they aren't going to be kind necessarily. <laughs> so it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Edward. Um, I don't know whether to hand over to to Ivan, but I think I'm just going to uh, pick on somebody. So, Vene, what what are your thoughts about it? I obviously have a lot of growing up to do because I I just for the life of me can't see vulnerability as a strength. Um, but I have made a note to actually go and look up Renee Brown and to listen to some of her, her chats because um, I thought about it um, over the weekend that when you said, you know, one of your questions was, what is the value and the power of being vulnerable? And I really, I don't see it. Um, I really don't. Even, even your little prayer, it, I know that he's got to move, but... I don't see the benefit of him sort of being vulnerable during that time. Um, so <laughs> I think there are a lot of risks. Um, you have to be very careful. There are two people in the world that I believe I can be totally honest and vulnerable with. And um, maybe, it's, maybe it's a great flaw of mine. I don't know. I'll have to listen to Renee Brown and find out. Um, um, I have a friend who says to me, but, you know, why don't you talk to your customers that you really have a, you know, 20 year relationship and tell them that you actually, you know, desperate for business, that you're looking for new business and, you know, and I see that as a weakness. I see that as admitting that I actually um, am failing at my business. I don't see it as a strength having, um, you know, there's a difference to saying to them, look, I need new business, which is not being vulnerable, but saying to them, look, I'm really desperate. To me, that is being vulnerable and it's a weakness. Um, so <laughs> I don't have too much to add to the power of being vulnerable. I know that um, in safe places, I can talk to my psychologist about anything. And yes, I am very vulnerable in that, but it's a very, very safe environment. And um, it's for a very specific reason. So outside of that, um, I really cannot see the benefits of being vulnerable. Okay, Ed, I see that, but there's still no benefit in him being vulnerable. There's benefit in getting a bigger shell. <laughs> so um, I'm sorry, but I, I really don't have a positive side to this, but I will definitely look up Renee Brown and perhaps it will change my attitude. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Yeah, well, sometimes sometimes it is a challenge, you know. Can can a, can a, can a weakness be a strength and, and, and vice versa? And, and I think I think it can be, you know. So it's gonna be interesting. So let's go to the most vulnerable person in the group now. So that's Trevor and find out what he thinks about all of this stuff. Uh, yeah, so when Ed turned around and said he felt vulnerable because he didn't do any work, I didn't do any work and I don't give a toss. So, um, you know, <laughs> so uh, somehow we actually got to work on the spot and be able to come up with what's in your mind. And perhaps uh, when things hit you, uh, that really exposes who you are uh, or amplifies who you are. Uh, and I tend to agree more with Vernay. Um, and Vinay, to put Ed on the spot, uh, quite simply, 
Uh, he obviously only interviewed the hermit crab that got the shell. What about the poor guy that's still running around uh, open to the seagull? So I think it had nothing to do with a decent discussion. If there were the two of us out there, our fists would be up and we'd be fighting out first one in gets that blooming shell. So I don't know what you're looking at. Another waste of a million pound on a research topic uh, on the go. Um, so... Uh, vulnerability, I, uh, as I think about this, uh, when have I been vulnerable? Um, when those people who are very close to me have been affected. Um, and so I, I think I've found vul that I've been this vulnerable person um, when I've seen individuals close to me affected. And that, that has, uh, well, it's brought me to tears. Um, but the rest of the time, uh, but those tears, uh, I must tell you, are really just hardening the concrete. Um, so I, I think the more tears that flow on behalf of what's happening with other people, harden the concrete that is inside of me um, that if, if I see injustice or I see anything like that and, and I, I get this feeling that something has got to be sorted out, I go out and sort it out. But it's uh, not often uh, that I have been exposed. Now, where was Vernet going? Because there was something uh, neat about what Vernet said, uh, fear. Uh, fear of telling other people that you're actually desperate. Um, I don't think that's what business is about. I, I think there is a strength in recognizing that the business of business is profit. And in order to generate um, uh, profit and revenue, you've got to be out there selling. So uh, this nonsense of going out to people and saying, hey, I'm desperate, I need your business is a lot of cuck. Since when do you ever go out and tell people that you're actually desperate? This is who I am. I am Verne uh, Pagel. I'm the best secretarial business, uh, what services operator in town. Uh, we've got capacity for business. Do you have this need? So it's just a switch of the capacity that you've got in the way that you actually go out and sell it. Uh, where my agreement with you is, you never turn around to an individual and say, hey, I'm desperate, I need your business, please uh, give it to me. Uh, because I can tell you, we are wired to be the other way around. How can I actually give this person business that's so desperate? Clearly, they can't survive in this lifestyle. So, uh, you know, I think this life is about recognizing strength. And, and that we, we and Ed admires that hermit crab that actually got the shell and has given no thought to the other poor guy, what happened to him and the seagulls that came over Sorrento and took out the exposed. Ed, I am disgusted. Um, so you're going to have to actually argue why uh, you stood up for the guy who got the shell because he was he or she was a bully of some kind. Uh, so what else can I offer you? Um, fear is vulner vulnerability. Is it an exposure of fear? I don't believe so. Um, I think there should be an element of fear in all of us about the future. And I can tell you right now, I'm sitting here turning around and thinking, do people actually recognize just how serious this COVID-19 thing is for 2021? And I, and I want to leave something in here. If people are not working on their alternatives, as we are doing right now, I think they better fear how vulnerable they are going to be if this thing gets where it looks as though it's actually going to be going. It looks as though we are going to go into a lockdown territory like we've never seen before. And that might happen for the next three to six months in 2021. Now, if you haven't prepared for that with an alternative, how vulnerable are you going to feel when no income is coming in six months down the line? We've got to be prepared for that. And it's about developing the alternative. So I'm using this to actually blow my bugle and the trumpet because I'm going to put something in Facebook. Uh, and talking about vulnerability and fear, um, that to-do list uh, for my wife, um, 
Ivan, you've got to give me a break until about the 11th of January uh, because I've got a lot to do. I'm living in fear. No chance. Absolutely no chance at all. Uh, <laughs> and I think you've all got it completely wrong anyway. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think, you know, I, I, again, it, become, it comes down to semantics and interpretation for me in, in, in many ways. And uh, I think one can be vulnerable without being weak. Um, I think in some cases, vulnerability actually shows amazing strength. Uh, so, and, and, I, and I think like, like the Hermit Crab, and I love what Lee put in about the, about the octopus teacher, because uh, what, is, what is vulnerability really all about? It's recognizing that you have a weakness somewhere and finding a way to adapt. So it's about learning. And the only way you can learn is by either asking questions and, and listening to the answers or, or imitating. Um, so you've got to be vulnerable enough to say, I don't know. Um, and, 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 you know, um, you know, I don't know the answer to this. Can, can somebody help me? And I think that's, that's the way I've learned just about everything in my business career. You know, I've, I've been in situations where I've been working with, uh, senior executives in businesses and, and they say something. Um, I mean, in the early days, I didn't know the difference between a debit and a credit and, a, and I didn't know what a T account was. And, uh, you know, I was designing systems that, uh, that, that had general ledgers in them and, and th things like that. So, you know, I'd be sitting with the, the FD and he would say, well, you know, you know, this and that. And I would say to him, oh, I'm not 100% sure that I understand. Would you mind explaining? And, and he'd say, oh, of course, yeah, yeah, you know, and he would explain. And so I'd learn. Um, and so the next time I didn't need to ask the same question, you know, I'd ask a different one. And, uh, you know, and then that's, and that's the way I, I believe that, you know, well, I know that I've, I've learned probably 90% of, of what I know about business and, and systems and, and business processes and things like that is, is simply by being vulnerable enough to, to say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure hundred uh, percent understand what you're getting at here. Would you mind explaining? And, uh, and for me, that's a vulnerability. It's not, I know everything I you know, I can do everything. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a programming wizard and I know, you know, I know how to put these things together and make things work. Um, and, uh, and then for me that, uh, yeah, I think that has been one of my major strengths over the years in the way that, that we've done things and, and built systems and, and serviced businesses is, is by, by simply going there and saying, you know, let me get inside your head. Let me understand. You know, because uh, I need to be on the same page um, as you, and uh, and then we can then we can work together. And so, so for me, that's uh, you know that's the angle I take it. I think it, you know it can be uh, you know vulnerability can be seen in a very very negative light as as has come out in the discussion this morning. And uh, I think there's a there's a big difference between being needy vulnerable and being proactively vulnerable. And, and I think, uh, you know, the needy vulnerable, uh, at least started off by, you know, people saying, you know, that they, they, they go over the top and talk too much and, and, you know, those sorts of things. That's, that's needy. That's just looking for validation. Um, it's, it's not looking for quality input. It's not looking for learning. It's simply, you know, validate me because I'm, I'm, I'm needy and I'm vulnerable. And I think that's, you know, that, that to me is a, is a big is a big difference. Uh, and so I think, yeah, for me, I think it can really be a strength, um, you know, and uh, again, it's, it's the mindset with which you approach it, I suppose. Um, so uh, none of us know everything. None of us are ever going to know everything. But if we're vulnerable enough to, to accept the fact that uh, we can always learn and we can always learn from someone else, uh, then, then I, think, I think we can only grow and, uh, and, and get better. So yeah, those are my thoughts, Lee. Thanks, Ivan. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good topic. It's a good topic. Um, and I really uh, appreciate, you know, this, this, the, even in a small group like this, we can bounce the idea backwards and forwards because we've got different opinions and, and thinking around it. And uh, so it makes you, you know, not just, you, you've got to process it and think through and not just, uh, accept uh, other, you know, your your own thinking. Uh, so I like I like that. So thank you so much, um, Vinay. To I know I'm not sure that Trevor's going to be able to join us tomorrow. Uh, he may or may not, depending on his connectivity. 
Uh, and if he can't, and especially as he's very um, fearful of his wife, who's going to be with him, uh, and she may <laughs> be telling him that um, they have to go out on a game drive. <laughs> and I know Shel uh, Sheldon, and she is definitely not a scary person. Only Trevor's scared of her. Um, <laughs> um, that um, I'm just wondering about your story. So it might only be four of us, you know, three of us listening. Um, and if you want to go ahead, that's wonderful. We would still love to do that. Um, but it may, when in the new year, there may be, Jasper will be back and, uh, you know, some of the others more regulars. And so I'm just wanting to check with you, Vinay, if you want to go ahead or whether you want to uh, rather uh, save it up. She's saying, what do, you, what do you prefer? I would prefer Trevor to be there because um, I know that it's, you know, um, he loves hearing people's stories and I think it's important that that he is there. Um, so, that's so no problem, then we'll do it in the new year. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. No rush. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let's let's leave it then. I think um, it'll be great to start the new year listening listening to Vinay's story and and Vinay, telling your story is an act of vulnerability. So you are taking a huge step. <laughs> if it's something that you are are very reticent about, except for people that you have a hundred percent trustworthiness with, so we feel very very privileged that you're willing to to step out in that. So thank you very much. Um, but I would like to um, pick up on what we say, talking about here, uh, and it's this aspect of fear. You know, it's something um, Edward raised in the early, early days of Wisdom's Chat. He put something, he, he, you published something, Edward, and you said it, it made you, um, there was some anxiety, and, and, and you said, well, could we just address this feeling of fear? And I think it's that fear of vulnerability of creating something and putting something out and you don't know, uh, you know, how it's going to, to come across. Um, and, and then the fear that Trevor's talking about is, is, is a fear of, um, of looking at the context and saying, it's good to be afraid, wake up, be afraid and do something about it. Uh, and so um, I'd love us to talk about what is a good fear and what is a bad fear. Uh, you know, instead of us lumping fear all into the same box, saying, no, don't be afraid, always be brave. Um, so so what, are, what are fears that are worth paying attention to and how do we pay attention to fear? Maybe that's really the question. How do we pay attention to fear in a way that makes it work for us? Um, so let's that be the discussion. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, sounds 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 good to me. So yeah, have no fear. Have, have no fear. Yeah, fearfully good day, and uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely be here tomorrow. So have a good one, folks. Yep, we'll see you.